this series is almost all photographs of Martha's Vineyard skateboarders. There's a lot of other skaters in the pics peppered in from international destinations. There are other shots of uh, foliage or um, landscape where that felt right or where it was the compositional thing to do. Without even thinking about it, I, I love right triangles. Um, it also was partly out of the necessity of wanting to print on, you know, four by six, and it was very inexpensive and very adjustable, so I could take multiple, make multiple prints at different, you know, um, with different colors. It was just economical, and then I can't ex exactly remember when the, I started thinking about the shape as a good vessel for this project, but that was so long ago that I've sort of forgotten, you know, what, you know, spawned that. So by the time I was knee deep in the pictures and like, and the idea having evolved in my head, I'd sort of forgotten why it looked the way I originally thought of it that way. I can start off talking about this piece. This is 2008. Um, this piece is sort of, the first one where I was showing up at the skate park um, and found the skate park on the island, saw the, um, the old apparatus at that park was skate light and some big transitions, um, a double half pipe with a spine and um, some big extensions. And seeing that through the trees, you know, driving, you know, as I'm driving, I'm seeing that come out in the sun through the trees was a, you know, a sort of a, a magical moment to see that the vineyard had a, an incredible skate park with some really um, good looking skate, skate stuff, um, skate geometries that were inviting and looked really good. Um, so kind of astonished to see that there was also a bunch of concrete in the vineyard park and that it looked really creative and well made and um, there was a lot of interest uh, in the concrete part of the park as well on the other side of the park. The original park had that one corner that was all concrete and then the rest was all made out of wood and skate light. Um, so these are some of the people who I first encountered there. Um, really made some of my first friends on the island there, uh, just you know, by virtue of going there, uh, you know, over and over, loving that park and skating it. Um, there's people here who are still skating, some who I don't see so often anymore, or who are sort of off doing other things, maybe living off island. That obviously happens all the time. Um, but you've got Richard Medeiros, who, you know, is a core skater on the island. Nick Briggs, Steve-O. Uh, this is actually a picture of my brother skating um, in the Autumn Bowl in Brooklyn. Um, this is also, on the Lower East Side, uh, a skate contest that happened spontaneously, or happened, obviously, not spontaneously, but for me, spontaneously, uh, when I was there. Uh, doing some demolition with a friend right across the street from this. Um, there's young Nick Briggs. Um, you know, as I'm going through, I can sort of go through in a linear way. I sort of like the idea of maybe trying to break it into the path, some of the other paths that this follows. Um, I've got a bunch of pictures here of the of Sam Eddy's ramp, his backyard mini ramp, um, that a, a bunch of local bros put together in 2008. Um, you've got Zeb and Brad Tucker and um, uh, Nick, of course, and uh, Elliot's in there somewhere. There's Sam cutting the granite for the coping. Sam's a stonemason and the, 
the vineyard has several uh, features in the park and obviously at Sammy's backyard ramp they replicated it uh, where the coping is a right angle uh, granite slab and um, that's a pretty special coping it's a special shape and it's there's a lot of potential for grinding it, it just has a very uh, strong uh, style to it um, so these guys put together this incredible ramp I got to be a part of it um, and it was one of the things that sort of uh, made this place feel welcome to me again and again. Not unlike the park itself, but the, the backyard mini ramp um, is just a perennial favorite. You can never go wrong. Um, so we've got some other people here. You have a lot of Steve-O, because he was just sort of like an early hero, a young guy. These are both portraits of him. I was using an SLR and people I think were more it was an old film camera, so people were more sort of ready to pose and sort of get into it and, and saw the project more later on. I'm using a point and shoot and it's got a different vibe completely. But these were all taken with that camera, that old Fuji. This was what Sammy's ramp looked like when we finished it. We'd skate it at night a lot, put the lights out. It was really just one of the funner times in those early days was Skating Sammy's ramp, just really great ramp. Um, so, and then there's a couple other LES things in here, the Lower East Side, and some other things in here that kind of establish the time of year and establish some of the feelings of the vineyard. It's very common to see um, things that are, you know, not skatable or typically sort of um, not a part of the skate sort of uh, Venn diagram to be included and then given, you know, trucks and wheels to sort of see, you know, what, what happens. Um, this is just such a quintessential part piece of the vineyard, you know, um, having a wood stove and using it and, you know, sort of keeping myself alive, you know, with a wood stove. It is actually skatable and I did, part of the reason it's here is because I did a show in Brooklyn uh, in 2008 where it was in the show and um, we skated it. I, this one is going to be trickier to skate but I'm going to take this to the park when it gets out of here and try to shoot some videos with it or do something see if it rides at all. It could be you know borderline unskatable. I'm sure it's I'm sure we can work something out this is the Wasp of Saturn. This is one of my favorites, um, partly because I have a lot of memories tied up in skateboarding with my daughter, Maeve, and she was sort of one of my um, best skate buddies in 2012. For whatever reason, she would come with me and um, spent a lot of time at the park as well as at the mini ramp which we were still skating um, so let me see here well this is also a big year for um, a young guy named Eric McElhaney I, I knew he was he had you know a great skater really good style really you know mellow kid super super nice kid but then one day it became clear, I saw him skating and he was boosting, you know, these big airs and, you know, clearly had just graduated to a whole other level of uh, shred. So he basically, I started trying to take pictures. I sort of put my skateboard down and went and got my camera <laughs> at that point and tried to, tried to capture as much, as, a, uh, as much of it as I could. Of course, it's not formal enough and he doesn't feature as heavily once you get past 2015 um, but he is still a huge ripper but he just stopped making it such a big priority at this point it was a it was a priority for him you know he was he was just taking names and just shredding every night this is Mexico and there was this incredible park but the skate park came out of nowhere and it was just super cool 
that's probably one of the more interesting kind of features on this one because it's just such a cool little thing. It has this bank to ledge kind of thing with a gap and then there's like a way to skate right into this mini half pipe and then there's like a fan section and a band stand up there or whatever that is. Anyway, just kind of cool to see architecture like this pop out. Um, you know, people building stuff like this. I just think it's really cool that you could be driving down the road almost anywhere in the world and something and that comes up with these pieces as well, that you just feel like it um, is becoming more common for things like that to just pop out. When people say flow and they're talking about skate architecture, if you're talking about a park, it means, I think where I brought it up before, um, I was talking about the old park and how the old wooden obstacles didn't flow as well with the newer concrete stuff or the other stuff that was built at the same time. Um, and in that context, all that it means is um, gravity being utilized through architectural, sculptural objects um, in such a way that it's easy for someone skating it to relatively fluidly go from one thing to the next. I think this one for me is sort of like a blanket that's hanging over the back of something. Um, I've thought of it as a kite or as a bird or as something that flies but I kind of think of it more like it's a um, tapestry or a piece of cloth. It was influenced by the process of you know, working with this concentric or, or uh, um, chevron um, concept that I've always really enjoyed working with.